Now to make our nectarine wine, we'll be using the following. I've got five pounds of nectarines. We're also going to need about three cups of sugar. We're going to be using wine yeast with this one. I'm using a Red Star Premier Coupe de Blanc because of its low ABB. We're going to be using a Red Star Premier Coupe de Blanc because of its low ABB tolerance. And we're also going to be using bread yeast in our um, yeast nutrient. Now, of course, if you don't have wine yeast, you can use bread yeast as your primary yeast. We're going to be using the juice of a quarter of a lemon and the lemon juice is going to be used as our acid blend substitute, which is going to give our wine just a little bit of acidity and brightness. We'll need one black tea bag and the tea bag is going to act as our tannin substitute to give our wine a little bit of astringency or mouthfeel. We're going to need a couple of straining bags because we're going to be chopping this fruit up and we need something to hold the fruit. We're going to need one gallon of water. We're going to be using as our primary fermenter, a fermenter that has a wide mouth opening so we can get our straining bags in there. I should point out that this fermenter does have a built-in airlock. We'll need a one gallon jug, demijohn, carboy, take your pick to continue on fermentation after primary has been completed. Now, because that fermenter does not have a built-in airlock, we're going to need an airlock with bung. I'm going to need a large eight quart pot with lid, nice tight fitting lid. Having a hydrometer with testing tube will let us know what our ending alcohol by volume is going to be and also if any other problems should occur that might stop fermentation. And of course, using your food grade sanitizer of choice, we want to make sure that everything has been properly cleaned and sanitized. And that is what we're going to be using to make this wine. With our nectarines nicely cleaned and washed, the next thing we need to do is we need to remove the pit that's in the middle of it. And not quite sure if I should cut this way or I should cut this way, but uh, let's try cutting this way for the first one. Cutting around that big giant seed and can it be peeled off or twisted off? Not easily. All right, cut around the seed. It's one half. Cut around the seed again. Basically just gonna cut around the seed. And we're going to rough chop these, do it now. And we want to get these into the straining bag. And wrap up the rest of them. Of course, with my very second one, I decided to cut horizontally instead of vertically and was able just to twist it off with the seed in one hand and the or pit in one and the other end was just came out clean so I'll be doing it that way for the remainder of my peaches just finding out which end is up and just simply cutting around the seed that way and hopefully this will work the second time twist it and there you go that's going to be my procedure. All right, let's get these into the pot. Let's go ahead and start this process by adding in some of our water. And we want to take a little bit of our water and put it in a small pot. Ooh, anywhere from a quarter to a half a cup. We'll pour the remainder in our big pot. It on. And in our other pot, I'm going to go ahead and drop in our tea bag. And we want to take a quarter teaspoon of our bread yeast, which again is going to act as our yeast nutrient. Yeast need more than sugar to survive, and the nutrient helps to provide a little bit of extra kick for the yeast. We want to turn our stove on.
and we're going to bring our black tea slash tannin substitute slash yeast nutrient substitute to a simmer. Now with our water at a nice rolling boil, we want to do a couple of things. One, we want to carefully ease in our fruit. And two, we want to add in our tannins, substitutes. And go ahead and add that to the mix. We want to make sure the stove is turned off. And we want to put our lid back on. Now again, since we don't use sulfites, once again, this is to help kill off any wild yeast that might have been on the outside of the fruit and to a lesser degree kill off some of the harmful bacteria that might still be on there. And we're just now going to wait for this to come down to room temperature. Okay, now that our mixture has cooled down, we can go ahead and add in our sugar. Now, admittedly, yeah, it would have been a little bit easier to add in our sugar while it was still warm, but hey, you know, it's done now. Let's go ahead and stir that in. All right, now that that's been incorporated, let's go ahead and take a hydrometer reading, see where we stand. Let's go ahead and add in our acid blend substitute, which is basically just a quarter of a lemon. Just give it a good squeeze. We are not precise on this channel with exact pH measurements and all of that. Just don't want to get any seeds in there. That's all. All right, put that aside. And let's go ahead, cover that up for a moment. All right, looks like our hydrometer reading is coming in at 1.074. Now, in order to turn our juice into wine, we need to add our yeast. I'm adding a quarter of a teaspoon of our wine yeast, but again, if you don't have wine yeast, bread yeast will do just as well. I'm trying to spread it out as evenly as possible, but with these bags in the way, that's usually not going to be the case. So we're just gonna go ahead and just slightly incorporate the yeast into our mixture a.k.a. must. Put a cap back on. And move on to the next step. Now, one of the last things we want to do as part of this part of the process is to go ahead and label our creation. We are making a nectarine wine. We started it on this date. And our original gravity reading was 1.074. Now, what will happen next is the following. For the next three days, we want to go ahead and give our mouse a pretty good stir, uh, helping to squeeze out a little bit more juice out of the nectarines from the bags. And then after those three days are up, we're just going to leave it alone for the next five to seven days. After that, we want to remove the bags and discard the contents to serve their purpose. And we want to make sure that we've got this put away in a nice, somewhat dark, if not dark, cool location for the next several weeks, after which we'll perform our, perform our first racking, getting it out of the initial fermenter into a secondary fermenter. And then we'll repeat that process periodically over the next, over the next several months to a year. Uh, after which we'll go ahead and degas it, back sweeten it, pasteurize it, bottle it, <laughs> the whole nine yards. Uh, all of these steps in the winemaking process you can find in my, uh, my channel's winemaking operation playlist. Uh, as standalone videos, and that will be that. We'll have the test uh, tasting in 12 months to see if what we've made is was worth it. Okay, it's now been 12 months since we started making this nectarine wine, and during the intervening 12 months, the following things have occurred. It's been racked several times. It's been degassed. It's been back sweetened. It's been bottled. It's been pasteurized, corked, and labeled. Now it's time to do the tasting, and we're going to get right into this one. Oh, there is one other thing. 
I uh, decided to try something a little bit different this time. Uh, normally, I don't. Uh, I use my own subjective uh, judgment in terms of how sweet the wine is when I do the tastings. Well, this time I've decided to take a hydrometer reading of the final value after it's been back sweetened. The wine went dry. It went down to 0.992, and then I back sweetened it from there. And normally, I would say I kind of like my wines semi dry. No, I don't. <laughs> I like my wines uh, semi-sweet to kind of sort of sweet. Well, turns out that when I took the hydrometer reading, I like my wines a bit drier than I thought I did. So this was the hydrometer reading that uh, I ended up with after I did the back sweetening, just to give you an idea of where this particular wine ended up at. Another small glass because it is, what, 10 after 11 a.m.? Oh, yeah. Kind of early. The wine came in a bit hazy. No big, no big deal. Uh, other notes about the wine. Let's see. Born 625-2022. Uh, AVB ended up at 10.76%. Uh, it was back sweetened to a level again of 1.012. And if I didn't, if I failed to mention it before, it's been pasteurized. <laughs> All right. That having been said, um, how did it end up being? That 1.012 hydrometer reading, this wine is fairly. My, to my taste buds, seems sweet, which is fine. Nectarines, cure on a sweet nectarine. You got a sweet wine to go along with it. You do get the nectarine flavor. Not a whole lot, but you do get the nectarine flavor. Um, Mm, good. <laughs> um, yeah, it is pretty good. Um, surprisingly, even though it's sweet, uh, the tannins do kick in on the back end uh, to give you just that little bit of dryness um, at the back. But that's fine. Um, I don't really know what else to say about it, except that, uh, uh, once again, it's uh, another one of a string of successes. <laughs> I'm so happy that these wines are turning out good um yeah this is not bad small glass <laughs> all right uh again to keep this one short uh did it turn out to be worth the wait yeah it did um yeah it did um Wish it would have gone a little bit clear uh, during the intervening 12 months. But again, since we don't use um, clearing agents on this channel, uh, it's acceptable. I'll do it because even though I've got to go somewhere shortly, I'll take a small sip. It's kind of tasty. <laughs> so there we go. Keeping this one short. Uh, my take on doing a nectarine wine. Uh, one of the fresh fruit ones. I'm almost tempted to have another glass, but I do have to go somewhere shortly. Um, again, if you like what you see here, click on that subscribe button. Also notify, uh, become a member, and if you like, become a patron, help support this channel. So until then, yeah. Yeah, until then, I'll see you in the next video.